How's it going, everybody? Raising Hell here, and today I'm going to show you a replay of me soloing Dragonfly in one day with Wolfgang using no armor and no walls in Don't Starve Together. Now, this is not a speedrun, and it assumes a few predefined conditions, which are as follows. You're going to be playing as Wolfgang. You'll need a lots of carrots or berries, something to keep your hunger up in small amounts. You'll need a fresh ham bat, a pan flute that's at 100%, and the season needs to be in the early autumn. The mods that I'm using in this replay either reskin the user interface or show additional stats that exist primarily for the benefit of the viewer, but the fight is exactly the same without them and doesn't change in any way. To the best of my knowledge, the strategy I demonstrate in this video was pioneered by a couple of players in the clay forums a couple years ago by the names of Azukan and who needs space? Uh, I'll include a link in the description below this video if you'd like to read more of their posts. It's a little bit complicated, the strategy, but I'll do my best to explain the gist of it here. So during the dragonfly fight, uh, the dragonfly summons waves, waves of larvae, and you can force the dragonfly to enrage instead of starting another wave of larvae by killing the last larvae in a wave. Uh, instead of allowing it to self-combust, which larvae will naturally do over time when their sort of built-in timer counts down and eventually expires. Uh, if you force the dragonfly to enrage after every larvae wave, you'll only have to face three waves. The first wave at 80% of the dragonfly's health, the second wave at 50% of the dragonfly's health, and the third and last wave at 20% of the dragonfly's health. Now, each larvae wave adds one additional larvae to the overall number spawned in the previous wave. So you'll get far, five larvae for wave one, six larvae for wave two, seven larvae for wave three, and so on. But if you do this properly, the fight will end after the third wave with seven larvae. Uh, the trick here is to sleep the dragonfly with a pan flute before she spawns the last larvae in a wave. This allows you to run down the clock on the previous larvae wave and it allows them to self combust, which then gives you time to sort of engage with the last larvae from that wave one on one and actually you will be able to kill it then without being swamped by the rest of the wave of larvae. That's why it's so important to sleep dragonfly at that point. The pan flute is used here to both calm the dragonfly when she enrages, and it also allows you to approach a dragonfly without getting hit for that very first attack, uh, when you very first engage her. And it allows you to fight her without armor if you're good enough at dodging those attacks. In this video, I used Wolfgang to complete the fight in only one day. Uh, other characters you'll need to fight through the night, and you might also want something like a walking cane or a magiluminescence to increase your character's base speed so that way it's easier to dodge the dragonfly's attacks and the larvae attacks as well. Uh, the fight requires significantly more precision without at least a 20% speed boost over the default character speed. And with Wolfgang in his mighty form, it depends entirely upon your current hunger at the time. There's really no specific way to tell what percentage of a speed boost you're getting, but 20% is a pretty rough approximation and it's pretty decent. So let's get started in the actual video here. I'm going to be playing it back for you and we'll sort of watch together and I'll comment on what I'm using. So as you can see here is Wolfgang. I've got a pan flute and carrots in my inventory as well as a fresh ham bat. I'm going to use the pan flute immediately to uh, sleep the dragonfly. And as you can see there, I was able to get in a hit without her hitting me back. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to do that. You can, but like the just pan fluting on the very first attack works for this quite well. You'll see the user interface here is reskinned with the Victorian HUD. It affects it in no other way. We're also, you can see a combined status on the right, which allows you to see like what my current health is at the moment. And then of course there's the epic health bar mod at the top of the screen, which shows you what the Dragonfly's current health is. These are the prominent mods here. These are the ones that kind of affect the gameplay experience that I'm currently using. Now the first order of business here was to get Dragonfly down to 80%. 80% is where she'll spawn the first wave of larvae. You can kill them here or you don't have to. It's up to you and it also depends upon the convenience of the moment. So this first wave is going to be a total of five larvae. I need to uh, pan flute her after the fourth one has spawned uh, before she spawns the fifth one to make things easier for me. I could also kill, I have to kill the fifth one. That's the important thing to realize here. Uh, in this case, I don't think she got the fifth one down yet, but if she does spawn the fifth one, providing you can kill it, 
it, it really doesn't matter that much. So that's the reason why you sleep the dragonfly after the penultimate um, larvae for that wave has already been spawned by the dragonfly. And uh, once you kill that larvae by yourself, but with the character, the dragonfly is going to enrage. And you can tell she's enraged when she turns this bright golden color. You got to use the pan flute to get her out of that state. And then I immediately hit her. Uh, if she's actually on the ground, you can get in multiple hits. I think that's like two to three hits before she wakes up and swings at you. If you hit her immediately after pan fluting, you only get one hit before she hits back. So now this is the the in-between part where we're going from wave one to wave two. You're not going to be interrupted again by another wave of larvae um, until her health goes down to 50%. And at that point, we'll be on wave two of the larvae and it's going to spawn a total of, what is it, six larvae? Yeah. Um, so up until that point, you just have to dodge these attacks. Uh, the method that I use, of course, I'm trying to keep Wolfgang in his mighty form as much as possible, but during the actual fight itself, because of timing issues, I, I will not eat carrots very often. I'll take a chance from time to time, but most of the time here, I'm going in for six hits and then a dodge. So in other words, I swing my hand bat six times, I can hear it, and I sort of count in my head the six hits that I get in, and then I dodge her attack. If you decide to eat something, it'll probably be five hits and then a dodge. If you're on a road, you might be able to do more. You know, it all depends upon the speed modifiers you're using. Like I said here, this is a roughly a 20% speed modifier that I'm using. And as you can see there, I pan to Dragonfly again before she spawned the very last larvae for the second wave here. Uh, the If you're using other characters, it's a lot harder to kill the larvae. So. If, as you can see that I do with Wolfgang from time to time, I will kill a larvae. Uh, but if you're using a character without the damage modifier that Wolfgang has, you'll probably have to take it in two parts. You won't be able to just, you know, dodge that first attack by the larvae and then finish it off. The same applies if you're using a weaker weapon than a hambat. Uh, if you're using a stronger weapon than a hambat, your character might be able to finish off a larvae in one go, right? Like this is one engagement right here, and I'm able to finish that larvae off, but that's largely because Wolfgang with the hambat is capable of doing so in that amount of time. So end of wave two here, sort of for the larvae, you can see Dragonfly was enraged again. One of the easiest ways to find her after she enrages is you'll be able to sort of hear it if you're listening with headphones or something. Uh, and then you can head in that direction. When you're avoiding the larvae, you kind of want to stay out of the field. You want to stay like a little bit beyond the larvae ponds when uh, you're in that position where the larvae are chasing you and she hasn't spawned the last one yet. So you don't want her to aggro onto you before you kill the last larvae. And you can prevent that from happening simply by just avoiding the center of the arena. You wanna stay around the perimeter of the arena for the most part, but you don't wanna to get too far because then the fight could end. She, she can de-aggro onto you without you needing to worry about the fight terminating, uh, providing you stay within that area. She won't come after you but at the same time, the fight won't end. So the, here is the ultimate wave, wave three. Uh, like I said before, when it comes to the characters and fighting these larvae, you're not always going to be able to do it. I try to do it because it usually makes it easier, but for example, if you have a weaker character, lower damage modifier, which is pretty much all the characters, or if, there, if she spawns multiple larvae at one single pond, you're probably not gonna be able to do that. In that case, just try to avoid their attacks for the most part, and you wanna wait for that penultimate larvae to spawn before you use a panther. It's important to remember here, I'm not using any armor, so I have to be especially careful in not letting the larvae hit me. Uh, of course, I still take full fire damage, and you would too, even if you were using armor. So that's um, a little bit outside the scope, and larvae do set you on fire if you get too close to them. So I've got quite a few of them following me here, and this is the part where you can just sort of walk away until they explode, because they have a built-in timer that uh, causes them to expire after a certain amount of time. As they lapsed here, I got lazy, I took a bunch of damage to fire, but, you know, it, it, I'm not saying this is a perfect run. I'm just saying that this was the first time that I managed to get through this without armor, without walls, and yeah, and without any like healing at all. So that is the end of wave three there. And now we have the last run here from 20% to zero. And as you can see, night is closing in here. So if you have more segments of night, it's going to be a little bit harder to complete this. 
but I managed to do it here uh, during the daytime plus evening hours, so I didn't need any artificial sources of light. I didn't need to use a lantern, but you know, if you're going to be extending into the night portion of the day, which you will be doing with most other characters that don't have that super massive uh, damage modifier, uh, bring a lantern with you and you can fight in the dark just using the lantern, using the same cutting strategies that I used here. So that pretty much concludes the replay of my solo dragonfly in one day with Wolfgang. No armor, no walls for Don't Starve Together. Hope it gave you some ideas for your future games. And once again, big shout out to the two people that made this possible, Azukun and Who Needs Space on the Clay Forms, which is where I first heard of this strategy. Thank you very much for watching as always, and I hope to see you next time.